Today I'd like to continue our devotional study on what is biblical conversion. In my first installment, I read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. As we continue our study, I'd like to read a couple of other verses that speak directly to this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved. Or Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of the flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So continuing from my last devotional of last week, we saw that, number one, conversion was not a work of man. Simply put, man cannot create from death life. That's the point I was driving home from 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And secondly, that conversion is far more than a simple decision of man. And thirdly, nor is it just becoming religious, joining a church or, or a denomination or a religious sect. It's not even following Jesus as if we have within ourselves to do that. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 says, Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Or Titus chapter 3, verse 5, Not of works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Spirit. The bottom line here is that conversion is not a work of man. It is a regenerating work of the Spirit of God, as I just read in Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. We truly are a new creation with a new heart, as I read from last week in Ezekiel 36, 26, and I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, referring to Ezekiel says, Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered to by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not with tablets of stone, but, with, but on tablets of flesh, that is, your heart. And here in our passages for today, conversion is described as being made alive. Ephesians 2.5, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Or Colossians 2.13, And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of the flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. This is not only another descriptive of conversion, but absolutely a distinction with a difference. You see, before true biblical conversion, you were dead. Without anything the Bible would call meaningful life. You were alive physically, but you were dead spiritually. 
Colossians 2, 13. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of the flesh. Or Ephesians 4, 18. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts. And then Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit which now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. Man, when I read that passage, it's a devastating passage. But thankfully, we have verse 4. But God, did you see that? But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Think about it. When we put these verses together, we come to the conclusion all we were before we knew Christ were walking corpses, unaware, un unable to respond to God apart from his intervention. John 6, Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. And then earlier in verse 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And the ones who, one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Here we have, I think, a good working description of what is called total depravity. We're dead in our trespasses and sin. And we are completely unable and unwilling to respond without God's intervention. And his intervention in the Bible is called grace, unmerited favor. You see, we are what we are totally by the grace of God. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and by his grace toward me was not in vain. The bottom line is, is that our conversion is a true miracle of God's grace. Yes, we may think that we cooperated with God, but the scriptures are clear and paint a completely different picture. Romans eleven six says, And if it's by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But, it is of, it, but if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. The point there is that grace and works do not mix. And what we might conclude from all of this, when we think about our conversion and the miracle that it is by the grace of God, all that you and I can really say is, to him be all the glory.